Board got it. This is green on the first try. Okay. All right, everybody, call us to order. I will read or so. Um, let's see. Review the minutes. I sent these around. Anyone has any questions, concerns, changes? Did you have a chance to look over the minutes, Frank? Um, yeah. From last time? Did you see anything that needs to be changed, added, corrected? No, I was good to me. Okay. So, can I get a motion to approve? I could second it, I guess. All in favor. Okay. Read it. And, um, <clears throat> Terry. And Larry, do you know Deidre? I've seen her. Yeah, Deidre uh, works uh, as a place down on, on the dock. Yeah. 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 I yeah. met you better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's going to maybe get on the water. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm the deputy in our master in the department. If you met Deidre. Really poorly got free Your Your company is called? Industrial Meat. Industrial Meat. Yeah. No, shouldn't you be wearing your work boots? I kind of have semi work boots on. I get to wear some of these, so. <laughs> okay, you guys, so we, um, let's move along just because we only have 45 minutes till our next meeting. I just want to make sure we track this if you're beginning to this. Okay, Kelly? Do I just do nothing? Talk about long term coffee and jumping in the morning. So, after our discussion at the last meeting, um, we kind of talked about coming up with an agreement if this is going to continue to move forward. The first thing that I want to say is the plan here is just to get this agreement in a place where everybody likes it and feels good with it. Then we're going to sort of put it aside um, until a discussion happens in May after all the other votes are pulled and we look at the docs and have that conversation. Um, and then at that point, um, this will go to the select board and a conversation will be had about if the select board wants to continue it, what the waterfront committee's opinion is on it. Um, and if they do want to continue what they want for an approval process, a couple of times it has kind of gone back and forth about whether or not the select board should have approval or not. So um, at that point in time, when we're there, we'll take care of all of that at once. I just want to get this in a good place ahead of time to have it and have it be ready to go. Um, I based it on other other towns that had dock space, kind of marinas that had slipped. I tried to pull the pertinent information from those. I also pulled stuff from basically the experiences that Chief and I have had. Um, a couple things have kind of cropped up that I felt needed to be addressed and that we wanted to get ahead of. So. Well, the only thing I would suggest is that the typical season, November 1st to May 31st, that doesn't give us a lot of time if Ted has to pull a dock and do work on it. So the summer season? Yeah, I, I would like to see that like April 30th. either either sometime in April, maybe April 15th or or maybe well, May 1st at the latest. Six, like six, months. Months. Since, well, six months makes it April. April? Yeah, the April is six months, and that's what they wanted for. Mm -hmm. Virginia is there for six months. So April. it should be April. We're going April we're going then from November to April. Through the end of April. So maybe so May April. April. Yeah. Yeah. And if they leave early, which they're liable to do, um, the rent stays the same, but the floats can be pulled. Right. Okay. So it seems like you're going to on when they're going to leave sure. and get that info to them. And Dave, how did you configure the pricing? So much a foot? Yes, yes. 40. 40 dollars a foot. We did a big study of all the marinas from um, Portland to Bar Harbor or, and determined what they charge for overwintering, what they charge. I just wanted to know that I know we got to read a digest version because I know, uh, I just wanted to make sure we had a, a set rate that we charge everybody. Yeah. So that's 40, 40 dollars a foot. For six, six months. months, yeah. Otherwise, it's eighty dollars a foot for Wisconsin for yeah. a year. Yeah. For a, if someone's going to rent a slip for the entire season, the whole year. Okay, that's eighty dollars a foot, and that's based on all the research we did. Yeah. 
Dr. Kelly wrote this a few minutes ago and the uh, number six on the bottom of the first page is 390. Mm -hmm. And with that survey, we had 20 
people that would rent seasonally in yeah, the Wisconsin yeah. from the Yacht Club alone. So that's, <laughs> that's why I, I still that's why I proposed those 14 slips yeah. back about three years ago. Yeah. And so what I'm gonna look into and I won't present it until I get some figures is maybe putting out a dock or uh, float with the dolphin to be able to put four boats on hmm. uh, this summer, for example. And I'm going to talk to Chuck Fuller down in Rupert Harbor about some prices on that and see, because if we can get four more boats and rent for the whole season, summer and winter, we're looking at $17,000. Yeah. And I think we could end up paying for all our maintenance and then make a profit when everything's paid off. So I'm going to look into that. Yeah. I love that. Sure. Well, we yeah. know there's a fisherman that would rent that. Fish. Yeah, I asked Cody okay, if he would, would you fish on a slug? He said, you're that right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 So that would do it in the summer. And mm -hmm. that would pay for the slip in the summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we want to leave where the Virginia is and the boat behind it free for summer wreck. Boats, Correct. Right? That needs to be. Open for overnight docking or people just parking for the day. Cool. Okay. So I think we hit the two kind of big hot ones that I just wasn't really sure about and not that I threw in there to, to hear. Should we have something there for live owner? Maybe there's. There. Okay. We can share oh, There's more on the back. Huh? Well, I was thinking if we have a lot. Got a little big stone with their boat stamps on the boat that that was not the cost. Of well, you know. Or just what if their boat catches fire and burns up all this? I, things happen. I and, and we have, I was thinking like with the vendors, we have a liability policy for them. It's kind of, it's, to me, it seems similar. So excellent. Any other questions? That would be good work. Nope, that was what I needed. I needed some feedback and some discussion, and I feel pretty good about it. And, yeah, good take, job. Take it from here. Don't think about it again. Oh, wow. So, too, like Vic was talking too about um, if someone comes to dock there for three days, where do they park, right? Yeah, and so they would have to get a hold of the you to authorize them to park for their three days, stay on their boat. For the Instead of three days in a row. Is that going to work down there? Because well, hoping that we're talking, we're still talking yeah. off season, right? Yeah. 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 This, I mean, they can. According to this graph here, it says uh, they can stay three days in a row, up to 14 days total for the season. And during those three days, can they overnight park on the parking area? Yeah. And yeah. so to do that, they would have to contact you to get refinished. You want to leave that? Oh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I think if it's an issue we can deal with later. I don't, I don't think we've had an issue of anybody wanting to sleep on their boat. Or, you know, where? You know, I mean, that a dog out there. Huh. Yeah, and obviously, there won't be an issue of parking on there. Anymore. And it just helps on both Harbor Master side and the police side so that they don't lose it. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm using the whole brain tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, any questions? Uh, no, I, the only thing I was uh, thinking about there, I was down to the waterfront today, down at the preview to it, and I was wondering if there's anything I can do to help. Uh, be able to get on the dock. It, it looks like the, uh, put a thing down there and you can't go on to the dock right there. Where the steps are? Under the pier, you mean? Yeah. yeah There's uh, a hole well, the in front of the step. Facing room one. Yeah, where the steps are, right? Yeah. So they made no attempts to repair anything? Well, uh, and they might have, but it didn't look it to me. I mean, I can check with Ted. And, and I, and I, 
maybe I should call Ted too. Just to, uh, I mean, if there's anything I can do to help him, um, I'm not sure what you know what you could do or what they're gonna do. They're um, I have to be you know, I, I was you can't just fill it back in with Eric and just walk out. Yeah. Is, is what it kind of looks like. Yeah. I, I, I think. Yeah. But it's going to take more than uh, something real fine. You know, it needs to have something a little bit firmer in there. Have, have, have you seen a three rod and concrete? <laughs> oh, oh. I can talk to Ted too. The plan is on fixing it before we get to. Close to the season. No. Have you talked to Ted at all about ongoing repairs? Or I mean, I know if we have a new storm now. Um, you know, I've been so busy. Guy and I've been really busy down at the waterfront. But uh, um, I've, I've had so many conversations with Ted that I, I kind of forget where we left off. But um, I know Ted's waiting to for the boats to get off so you can pull that see what's going on there. I know he plans on doing that. I know the, the float and the and the ramp that's down in the parking lot now is going to go up to the ferry landing. Um, I know there's been talk about the structure that's on the boat ramp coming down. Um just kind of hoping the well, it's falling down now. Yeah. 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 I did get a price for a king type ring on uh on repairing or building the new slopes or the new entry ramps like Bathurst and, and Belfast. Mm -hmm. um, I did pour that to Dennis. So I think he's seeing what, what there is for funds to do that, but it's gonna, he's gonna revamp it a little bit because I think he's a little short. Um, he only he only quoted for like 75 feet and what's down there now is 75 feet. So I wanna make sure that there's, a, there's enough Flow in the water so at low tide, a boat can still come in and get onto it. Um, so he's going to add one more section to that. But that's the price he gave us, um, includes new dolphins, everything. And, and, and the removal of the current structure that's there. Yeah, he's going to revamp that though because he said it would be cheaper if we removed it. So that's probably what's going to happen. What was your price? Um, Fifty-one thousand. Not bad. Not bad so, at all. But that's not with the extra twenty-foot section. He's supposed to get back me on that. So I'm hoping that if the town, he said, if the town removed the structure and the town took care of all the permit, um, it would be better for him and cheaper for us. So, so I, I know Ted will do that. Um, I know Will's already checked into with DG on all the. The permit, I think it's permit by rule they keep talking about. At, at the last meeting, there was a question whether the permit was needed to deal with the gravel or rocks. I think it's, um, it's, it's a permit by rule, but it's not a big deal. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into the Harvard Master Report. Um, I know you stretched the time. Let's save it. Right. Oh, I did, oh, that came out a little ruder than I meant for it, too. That's Skipper Cal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, just real, just real quick on the Harbor Master thing. The boat that's down there, um, that was on the moor that we've been talking about. Well, actually, the two boats down there. I wanted to pull both of them a couple weeks ago, uh, but the boats were so big that they couldn't just, they needed special equipment to do it, a bigger car to do it. Um, one of the boats broke off the moor during the last storm and ended up in Paul Cole. And oh. it's stuck on shore right now because of the uh, oh, the high tides we have. So Cito is going to come back tomorrow and put airbags under it and bring it into the commercial float. And then from there, they're making arrangements to have a truck come down and haul it out of it. Okay. Um, so hopefully that's going to be all done. The, the concern now is the cost of it. Um, we have one price of six thousand um, dollars. So, as of right now, the owner said he's got the money and he's willing to pay for all that. So, we're hoping that stays that way. Um, so, is that the one that was out? Way out by Mason yeah. Station. Yeah. The other one that was on the town war that eventually paid. Um, he disappeared Sunday night. Eight o'clock Sunday Eight night. Eight o'clock Sunday night. He went to Carolina. So. And that is 
that is someone we probably don't want back on our more. No, he is not welcome. So what? did his boat break more also? No, he no. only had it anchored and it floated over and someone nabbed it and someone nabbed it. Right yeah. Yeah. So I know it wasn't out there. I thought it was up. No. No, nope. and like I said, um he was supposed to be off March first and Sunday was the third. And he came in the dark of night and killed oh, that one out of there. Did, did they told that out of there? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was down there that, that day. I was like, I, I asked her, I said, you guys climbing? I said, no, I'm taking that boat. Yeah. So they told that boat with that outboard. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was terrible. Well, good to that. Really slow. They told it really slow. Yeah, I'll bet they did. <clears throat> so Cali is now a basic, had the basic course for the Harvard Master. And uh, her and I both took the boater safety course. So. Her dad gave her the nickname Skipper Cali. <laughs> That's probably going to end up on a Habermaster shirt for her in the near future. Um, but everything's been going good down there. We've been really busy, and and hopefully we're working on getting things all squared away so we don't have these ongoing issues. Um, I think we're we're I think we're close to getting things straightened out and where they need to be so that these things don't happen again. And it's it's things like having these agreements, it's things like getting our ordinance in order. Um, you know, it was as I said, we took that course, it was a uh, there was a lot of hot topics that and ordinances was one of them. And you know, we're we're not alone with with needing to update ours and change ours. And the bottom line is our harbor is changing and there's different people who are coming and going, and we just need to stay on top of it and get ahead of these problems before they I think I think a lot of the confusion and uh, I mean I've been told over and over and over again that I have the authority to pull a boat out of the harbor. Well, I found out I have a master and I do not have the authority to pull a boat out of the harbor. An abandoned boat. Um, but there's controversy over that. If I had pulled that boat, if I had pulled that boat two weeks ago like I wanted to, um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be sure about um, in Paul Cove right now. And um, but according to submerged lands, the harbor, the harbor is a is public trust. Nobody owns it. Everybody owns it. Um, if I have an abandoned vessel out there, I have to I have to put all the paperwork together, submit it to parks, submerged lands. They review it. They tell me to pull it. And it's like a 30 day process. So, it's what Callie fast. What mm -hmm. suggested is that maybe Dennis have a conversation with the town attorney to get clarification whether or not I can pull a vote and so or not, you know, violating something. But. Well, this, this I, I'm so sorry. I didn't no, the concern, the concern <laughs> is that we got a vote up there that we know is going to sink. Yeah. We knew this vote was going to be an issue, and sure enough, we, waited, and, we didn't wait. We just we tried everything we could. It, it just and the, the big issue that we run into, which when I say it, you're going to understand, the state is not going to take a solid stance on what you can and cannot do because they don't want to be on the hook if you do something and then you know. Yeah. And it's the same thing with um, it, you know the the attorneys that work for. Um, the Harbor Master Association, they're not going to take a stand and tell you what you can and can't do because, again, they don't want to be on the hook for they, it. They either. want our ordinances. Right. Yeah. So we need to put things in the ordinance. We also need to have some lawyer speak in there that says, yes, this is absolutely what you can do. And now it's here. And this is how we move forward. And I, and I do think, too, the better, the more we get to know the Harbor, like I found out yesterday talking to Dave King. We rely on our local resources. I rely on a lot of the local fishermen for things that go on down there. We rely on David King and um, and Ted Ted Christie on a lot of the more stuff. And I had a conversation yesterday with Dave about this boat and uh, about when the last time that more was inspected. And he goes, I told him that that more was due for inspection when he put the boat on there a year ago. So that more was way overdue. Well, I didn't know that because our warrants, we just started this inspection requirement with, when we went to online warrant. So a lot of the warrants were playing catch up with it. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if we had better communication, and that's what we're building with Ted and Dave, 
um, like there's a sailboat down there now that's on the morning that hasn't moved since I've lived in Wisconsin. And um, and it's got kelp growing off it, and, and um, but I don't. I mean, it, it's not as bad as it comes to the Is it Mary? What's his last name? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think that was the name. Okay, I, I don't. He know. has a skip that he had to take care of on the floor. I deal with that all the time. Okay, because he had well, he may not own the boat anymore, but it, he had a sailboat down there that just did yeah. But he's a diver, so. Yeah. I don't know who the I don't know. We, we I think we know who the Warren is. We just gotta get the number going on and to, to do it. Dave told me the name. I don't know the name right off the top, but I think the, the gist of it is that he and I are still learning and yeah. we feel like we're finding to a point of we're getting a much firmer graph. And you may see us being a little bit more stern or firm or whatever word you want to use about this stuff, you know, uh, and about, you know, standing on top of it and making sure it gets done when it's supposed to get done and whatever punishment isn't quite the word I want, but, you know, whatever needs to be done, if it's not being done, doing those things. Well, I have to tell you, I really appreciate having active fiber master workers really and truly. This is way long to do. We're lucky we haven't had more incidents as true. Than just now, and I am delighted that you're putting all this stuff in order. This is so important, and it's going to help us grow. So, I think. Yeah. so the boat that's still on land, land is the mooring that should have been inspected a year ago. Correct. Yes. The Squirrel Island fellow did not break free, he left. Correct. Okay, I didn't realize it was two. So, yeah, I thought it was the same boat. Okay, good. thank you very much. So yeah, and I also think um, so. It's really good that that um, that that fellow is going to pay for Seco mm -hmm. and take care of his boat, um, whether he pays with insurance or you can purchase. I think Seco packages. Uh, okay. I think it's really like, well, you know, what if it was the other guy and he was stuck? Would the town be on the hook for? I mean, or is he just on the hook for getting it? Out of well, whatever my class is. We would we would run into. Yeah. It would be a month before the town could do anything. We have to get it. But it would be a month. We can show you pictures of harbors across the state that are littered with boats, boats and floats, and and wow. they just it basically becomes a submerged land for all. Right. I mean, we've been lucky so far that we've been able to work things out and and know who the owners were and have owners that communicated with us and i think that's the bottom line but even if we know who the owners like the sailboat that we pulled out the town the town paid to pull that boat the town paid to store that boat the town ended up giving the boat away and the guy only paid 250 bucks for the boat to begin with and we got three times that just because he didn't have anything and then if, if you know, when you charge them and they go to court and the judge says, well, they got the money to pay, so they find them guilty and, you know, suspend the fine and, and no order restitution, um, it leaves us holding the bag. Now, Biddeford, we had a conversation with um, the Hockey Master from Biddeford. Biddeford actually budgets $18,000 in the annual budget, waterfront budget every year to deal with the other boats. So that may be something we want to do down the road. Get it from the boat rentals, <laughs> whatever. I mean, Maybe. but they budget money because every harbor is the only one. Yeah, we're, we're not alone, that's for sure. No. So you have to wait for 30 days before you can call it a year like both and then file and pay, pay, pay more, and then it's in the state's hands. It's a whole it's a whole it's a process. Whole process. Yeah. So and it's not a quick process. Okay. No, but it is. Uh, and then we do all the work. We do all the work, and if we put it up at auction and the boat sells, mm -hmm. we take our costs out. The rest goes to some red land. Mm -hmm. We don't get to keep the money. I can't no. imagine it being much less, much more of a cost if you even make your cost. Well, and it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of. I think I think maybe Callie said it. The people who have boats and take care of their boats, and those aren't the ones you got to worry about. No, it's the ones that, and John said it good. The, the guy that did the class, it's the ones who. Get the boats given to them, they buy for you know 200 bucks, they're gonna do this, and they just never do anything with it. Mm -hmm. And then that's the people we deal with. Yep. You know, because it costs more money than what they anticipated. Mm -hmm. And um, and the town's that the town ends up bearing that. 
unless we have ordinances in place to maybe stop that from happening before the problem. So, so that's our fallback for us as a town yeah. is to have our ordinance correct. So we can fall back on that, or can we? How can we take action? We can ask people to leave. I think we just have to and just like tomorrow. We just have to be consistent. Okay. Right. So if we okay. tell somebody right. they can't go there, then they can't go there. Right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we stood on ground with, with Mr. Day. And Who stood on their ground? I'm the yep. I'm the one that told us. <laughs> 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 she did too first. No, uh, Callie, Callie is definitely the, uh, the enforcer. I'm the mean one. The enforcer. Yeah, she's definitely the enforcer when it comes to uh, money. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, I think going forward, I think Callie had a good working relationship down there. Uh, and you know, we'll continue to, to clean up. The things that are there that are clearly issues, and then get things to a place where it ideally will not be an issue in the future, mm -hmm. and that it won't matter who is your harbor master or who your waterfront committee is. You'll have a playbook, it, right? It will just it will give continuity to to the rules to the harbor. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, anything else? Um, I have any more questions or comments for Kelly? Thank you again. Um, so this, you guys correct a couple of little yeah. inconsistent make for yeah. and then I'll just kind of. Do you think it should be clear, responsible for all damages, how much you both because of the window? So should you use the big word insurance in there? Or just that's, that, that's up to you. Do we, we I, I, just more? to be clear? Sure, sure. I know we went back and forth on insurance for more people who put their boats on one. I think they're going to find it's the same. But submerged land, submerged land guy says we're fools if we go back. I think we already have, but um, so if we go back with all that, he said every harbor in the state should require insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but this boat here, the boat that just broke out this morning, I served him a letter a week ago giving him seven days to get his boat out of the harbor. Yeah. And um, I asked him if he had insurance on it. He told me he did. Then when the boat broke up, I told him, I said, look, you told me you had insurance. Maybe you should um, check with them. Maybe they can help you. He goes, well, I don't know if it lapsed. Uh, so even if they have insurance, we don't know that they continue with insurance. Well, and when they do their annual renewal, but as long as I say it didn't happen. Well, it's just like power insurance. They, right. they renew it, get it, and cancel it. So, so is that something that can be um, circumvented by government? Well, I think that's a hot topic because I think we've started going away from it. We, yeah, I mean, I think we've started going away from it because there was so much kickback from the public. But even if it is an ordinance to require insurance, it's going to go to a town vote, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think we can continue. Uh, with the path that we're on, but I think that we, and I mean, I mean, I need to be a little bit more stern when it comes to the online more and, and checking that insurance and following up. If they are not entering an insurance saying, how come you haven't entered insurance, do you have it? And if you don't, why don't you have it? So it's not required, right? We changed the wording. It wasn't that? required, but it's recommended. recommended. Yeah. yeah. And just for situation. And, and there's no reason why I can't ask. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I just think it really saves a lot of headache in yeah. you know. You know, what I mean here we can send a good preference to those who have insurance. Sure. Sure. I mean and, and, and you know, one thing that popped up, I mean it popped up last year, it popped up this year. Um, for example, I had a person who was ready to register their mooring, but they are selling the boat that they currently have and they're getting a new boat and there's no boat in the water at the moment. And I said, okay, well, this is what you do. I will see that you don't have insurance and I will follow up with you when it gets closer to the boating season and ask you about your insurance at that point and have you, have you updated. So. I think we're on a little bit of a path. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I think I think we're on a good path. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, we're about to float down the river. <laughs> <laughs>
Richard Bowe was our okay. yeah. And yes, it's expensive to own one. It is, it just is. But it's also expensive to pull them off the bottom. Yeah. Mm, you know, mm. and, and we still have one sitting on the wall. Why should we? Right. There will be. I, I have a feeling that one's not leaving tomorrow. No. no. Should we, 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 could we charge a grant for that? <laughs> the judge didn't order anything. We saw the process to make this official, and then uh, it'll be. So. The rules to go by. Um, I'm thinking of Virginia. Yep, and I will make sure that they're first in line. Um, I need to. We need to. The the. Finalize it. Yes. Yeah. But so. Um, I'm kind of setting this aside for now. Um, a discussion needs to be had between you and Ted and ideally the Harbor Master and Dennis if he's going to want about the current float that is down there and what needs to be done um, and then uh, and any I'm going to use the word damages and if there is any and what Ted's opinion is as we talked about last time to find out where that is when we have that information um, I can take this to the select board and have that conversation with them about um, with that information and ask them if it's something that they want to continue doing. And if the answer is yes, I'm going to ask them what they would like to do for an approval process. Um, it's kind of that it would come to the Harbor Master or Deputy Harbor Master, it would in turn come to the Waterfront Committee. You would have that discussion if they feel that at this level is enough to approve that docking, then so be it. If the flight board wants to be included, then the waterfront committee would just do a memo where they, um, you know, recommend it to be rented and, you know, we review their application. So I think that uh, based on what Ted said, you see no boats coming back to tie up the next winter at this point. The fact that he's not crazy about having boats tied up there because of the damage to the boat. I don't think that's the case at all. The, 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 no, no, the last the, the, the last conversation that we had at the last meeting is after we left that. That we just need to know where those docks are for for damages and you know and what they are and what his opinion is before moving forward with that. That's all. Not, not that Ted has a, an opinion one way or the other. We just need to know what's going on because we can't see from here. See, so if you put sort of got like us to say, make the changes and good, and then we're going to wait till May. Yeah. We're just putting it aside. Like, gather some information, see Ted's opinion before we proceed and get it all the way to the select board. So I still get the feeling that we may not be running out of space next month. I think it's. I think it's up in the air. Right. So it's up in the air. That's yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. But we should know by May. Sure. What we're thinking is. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And you should know if you're going to talk to Chuck about maybe adding some length or something. Well, that's a, a proposal I will make in the future when I get some numbers and everything. Uh, okay. We we keep making proposals to the select board to keep shooting them down, and we do that with quite consistent regularity. Yeah. That's what you but you know what we're gathering more good information and we're getting more organized. You know, it wasn't the select board. It was the budget committee. It wasn't the select board. Yeah. It was not the select board. No. It was the budget. Oh yeah, okay. I'm sorry, you're right. But that's okay. Different times. You know, like I said, we're more organized now. We have better information. We've got the slip information and the Potential of 20 people that would love to have one. Yeah. There, is, so got, there is an issue with the southerly winds in the wintertime coming in and driving the boats against the flow. So I talked to Gartley and Dorsky. I left a message to Mr. Gartley telling him that that occurred mm -hmm. because the float arrangement that we wanted would have been similar. Mm -hmm. And that they would be right broadside to the wind, and maybe they have to be oriented. But I'm just 
I was just informing him of what's going on in the winter time with the sun leaves. So anything we consider, especially for winter dockage, and that's what we're talking about, uh, we got to consider that southerly breeze, uh, wind, damage, white caps, force, power. And it's typically out of the south more often than that. Besides the wind thing. Yeah. And the show looks just exactly out of the south. Yeah. yeah. Exactly out of the south. Yeah. Okay. Can I interrupt quick? Because I want to get done so that we yes. can switch over. Um, going over the rest of our agenda, what I'd like to do is schedule us to come back in two weeks to go over this because I think we're going to review the peer policies again, a little oversight on a couple of sections that we started two years ago and then we want to get it done for this year. Forgot to totally look you know, over seriously. So we're going to do that again. And um, then I just want to remind you that when we, we meet with the select board and the climate action committee this evening, that these are our important projects that we sort of got kind of waiting in the wings right now. You know, the boat ramp, the seawall, the erosion issue, and the slips. So if the, if the boat ramp is most likely in the, in the works somewhat. Um, well, it's in the work. I have no idea where. Where it is. Where it is. Okay. Um, and true. I do know, I mean, Cal and I learned all kinds of grants out there. Some one guy said they were pretty easy grants. He called me, I come down and look at it, and I say, yeah, yeah, man. Um, and those are what? For one, are $15,000 or $25,000 grants. Yeah, and I think that some of them are the same ones that. that yeah, that's already applied for. Okay. That's so great because normally they want to do it for planning and scheduling, not for physical work. There's a, there's a lot of, there was, a, I think we talked about three different ones, and one of them was only the physical. And I think the, that one is the same one that the group that you're meeting with tonight has looked into. I think that's one of the. Isn't there an annual harbor? That's the short harbor that comes up. Huh? There's a. Short harbor? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, short, and we have to share it. Yeah. Is anyone on top of those grants? Yes. And uh, Aaron. Yes. They're supposed to. But this, this climate action big overview grant that I think we're going to hear about this evening that will, I think, help with some of our projects. Yep. Uh, but as long as they know that these are some of our projects, I think that's right. part of the reason why we're having this meeting. So now's our time. This is a kind of a great opportunity. But anyway, so I'd like to. Um, Put off the peer application stuff. We sent out, I sent out the renewal notices, of, and I've got two back. We have it, and we have a new applicant for the peer. Um, which I just quickly, if I can ask you to go you know, quick, and then um, I'm not sure. what, what um, on most of the electric outlets that you get with your rental space, what is the voltage? Because a fellow that wants to maybe be interviewed. Um, so he, needs to, he needs to plug in, and I bet he's going to need. What was it? There's no 220 down there, is it? No. So one ten. One ten. So basically, you can plug in a fan and your computer. Okay. Okay. Can you direct that? Clear. Okay. So don't go away. You're staying. I'm not staying here, though. Oh. This is for the higher temperature. Okay. Rich or Jerm? No, sure, Jerm. See you soon. This is for the next one. You as well? Thanks, thanks. So you guys all sit up here and we'll be yeah, I wish we could have you know another this is what you know that okay so Dennis said to set up that projector, except leave the screen right here. It works perfect. Okay, so set it up. 
Uh, I can really set right on there, but he's here somewhere. Okay, so let me ask. Yeah, what do you do with that? Oh. Is there any more on? No, I don't think so. Confirm his spell. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hmm. So